So we have a question from Andrew Hoffman, Burlington, Vermont, about flea market chisels and how would I prepare them to get them to the state of finding them in the flea market to usable. To usable. And this is a good example. This is a very, very nice, like a Witherby pairing type chisel. It's got a slight curve to the blade. It's a nice sophisticated deal, as I talked about, in terms of you could be working with the handles slightly raised. But it's typical what you find. The handle's been cracked off. Someone's wailed on it too hard with a hammer. It's probably an apple. It might be a cherry handle. It's a socket handle, easy to one to replace. And it's got paint on it. The edge has been used for probably opening paint cans. It's got some rust on it and various things. This is going to need some restoration. This, by the way, will be no different than that when I'm done, in terms of I'll do some flattening to the back, some truing up of the various surfaces, the bevel, etc., and fitting it with a new handle. When I'm at a flea market, I often find handles that will work. These are both handles that I found that no, don't have any chisels to go with them yet, but I bet you that handle will be able to be fit into there if I wanted to have a nice big handle for this chisel. But certainly turning your own handles is the first place that I would start. Uh, this is when I turn for my burnisher, but you can certainly make all kinds of handles that fit. And there's a little bit of a trick to fitting these, but really all it is is a tapering socket with a shoulder. And then when you're fitting it, it's a question of putting it in, turning a little bit, seeing where the rust shows up, and paring it off a little bit with a pen knife or a chisel or a file or whatever it is until you have a nice fit. So let's go to the, the actual sharpening of the blade. So this is pretty well oxidized and pitted in the back. You're probably never going to get this far back in that chisel, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. But when I bought it, I was concerned about it. I, was, I looked at it and tried to make sure that it wasn't badly rusted on the back, so in which case it would take a tremendous amount more work. Then this one is just, just basically very, very dirty. And the edge is very, very, very dull, which I'd expect. And as I said, it's got paint all over it. So the first thing I would do would be, after I fit a new handle to it, is to probably take it over and grind it and reestablish a nice straight edge. Now on a beat up chisel like this, you probably have to do some serious grinding and come back quite a ways to get past all the chips of the edge. After grinding, then I'm going to try and hone the back of the chisel and get that to a flat surface. You, the, the, the grinding of the, of the bevel is now will be easy enough to hone, but the back is all dirty, uh, not necessarily flat or anything like that. You need to, to uh, flatten that out. And I would start on a piece of sandpaper like 120 or 150 or maybe if, if you had to go 220 on plate glass you could go and you can flatten this out very readily and start to develop a, a uniform scratch pattern over the back so that you get the back flat over the working area and you see the working area of this is really just behind the edge and anything else as acting as guide for when you're chopping a mortise or paring whatever you're doing the back being flat guides the cut so that's important so I would go and I would hone this to progressively finer and finer grits with sandpaper. And when I ran out of sandpaper of, let's say, 600 grit being about the finest practical that you can get, then I'd jump to my water stones or my oil stones and I'd go through the process of with that until I go to a higher and higher polish, trying to end up with a polish similar to this.